Hello, it's Keith here, and this is the first of the platform-specific series of ARM assembly programming tutorials. In this series, we're going to be looking at the individual platforms, that's the RISC OS, the Game Boy Advance, and the Nintendo DS. And we're going to look at how to do common tasks on those systems. Now, today, we're going to be looking at bitmap graphics and palette definitions on RISC OS. So we're going to be looking at my main example, the one which shows a little bitmap on the screen and some text. And we're going to look at the code that is underlying that that actually does the work of getting the graphics to the screen. Okay, let's go over to the example and let's see it in action and then we'll discuss the code that actually runs it. So we're using this hello multi-platform example here and we're going to compile it on RISC OS. Now, of course, there are two parts to this. There's the common code in this multi-platform, but then there's individual code which is tailored to the RISC OS to get the actual graphics onto the screen. So you can see we've got a bitmap here and we've got some text here which is also being drawn with bitmap graphics. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So let's just move that out of the way and let's have a look at the code that's actually doing the work. So the example running today is running in 16 color mode and this is the code that actually does it. Now there's three parts. There's the setting of the palette to define the 16 colors. There is the initialization of the screen to turn the bitmap screen on and also there is a get screen pause command which will calculate the memory address of a pixel defined by an x and y position and a get next line command which will move down one line and the get screen pause and get next line functions exist on all of the systems so we can use those in a sort of common way on all of the systems to calculate memory addresses for screen coordinates. So that's sort of part of the way that I'm getting the multi-platform code working. Now the set palette function doesn't really exist on the Game Boy Advance or the Nintendo DS because those are true color systems in most cases. There is a 256 color mode on the Game Boy Advance though. But um, I'd say generally speaking though, the, that, that's more specific to this system, but we're gonna go through all of this today and discuss how it works. Now. With the screen initialization, this is where we're going to turn on the screen. Now, what we're actually doing is we're using an SWI here and we're sending characters to the screen and those characters will define special control codes which will define screen operations, in this case, changing the screen mode. So what we're doing here is we're sending character 22 to the screen and that requests a screen mode. Now we've got two options we could use here. We could use the 16 color screen mode or the 256 color screen mode. In this case, we're using the 16 color mode one screen nine. So we were then sending a nine in the same way, effectively printing a character nine to the screen, but of course it never actually appears on the screen. Now that will change the screen mode, but we want to turn the cursor off. We use a different SWI for that. We're using number 36 here in hexadecimal. That will turn the cursor off. If we don't do that, we will get some glitching. If I just try that, if I just disable this here. And if I run again, well, now you can see we've got a cursor on the screen. That's quite annoying. So we don't want that. So what we do is we have that SWI there that will remove the cursor. Okay, now once we've turned on our screen, we do need to work out where the screen memory is. So we have a function to get the system variables and we use switch hexadecimal 31 here. Now we have to pass two parameters, a, a set of variables we want to receive and you can see them here. Each one is numbered and these are sort of defined by the operating system as having a function here. And then we need to provide a variable for these return values to be passed back in. So you can see here we're requesting the screen start, the display start and the total screen size here. It's actually only screen base we need here in this case. But what we're doing here is we're passing some longs for it to fill these values in. Now we call SWI31 with the parameter of the variables we want. That's this thing here, ended in a minus one. And a link to the return variables, which are just here. And then this will return the address effectively of the screen base, which is what we need for later on when we're drawing graphics to the screen. Okay, now we need to actually set our palette to get the colors right for our drawing. Now we've got a palette defined here and this uses one nibble per channel. This is the common format I use in my multi-platform tutorials. I use this on every system. It was originally based on the CPC Plus palette, but it tends to be a good middle ground between all of the 16-bit systems. A lot of the 32-bit um, systems, the ARM and the, um, and the later systems, they tend to use 16 bit of maybe five bits per channel or something. But um, as I say, this is good a good common ground for all of the systems. And so that's what we're using here. Now we've got one nibble per channel here and we're gonna convert that to the layout that the RISC OS wants. We're gonna use this set palette command to do that. So we're loading in our palette here and then we are transferring a byte from that and we are setting the palette here. Now the set palette command is 
Where is it? Here it is. And what we have to do once again is we have to actually write bytes as characters to the screen. So we use um, character code 19 and we print that to the screen and that defines we're going to set a palette entry. Then what we do is we specify the number of the palette entry we want to change. Now R11 we've stored from R0 here and that's the palette entry number we want to change. So we're using that as the number so 0 onwards for the palette we want to change. We don't want flashing mode so we are sending a character 16 to turn off flashing mode. And then what we do is we actually transfer one nibble in the top four bits of a single byte here and we have to transfer the red, then the green, and then the blue. Now, our format is slightly different. We're using green, red, blue, so there's a little bit of bit shifting around just to move the bits into the correct position. But generally speaking, it's pretty close to what the RISC OS machine needs because it does want one nibble per channel. So you can see we're writing those nibbles, again using the print char command, and that will define the color. And the repeated use of this set palette command is being used to define the entire palette here, and that will do the job very nicely for us. So that's turned on the screen and it's set the palette now. The final thing we need is a way of actually calculating the screen coordinates for things like plotting pixels. Now what we do with this character sprite here is we calculate the first position with get screen pause and then we transfer each line to the screen here and once we've done a line we then use get next line to calculate the line directly below the first pixel. That tends to be the easiest for multi-platform systems because often it's quite hard to calculate a screen position but it's relatively easy to move down one line in some cases with some systems like the um, spectrum maybe it's a bit difficult to move down a line sometimes but um, as I say generally speaking this is the most effective way of working in a multi-platform way. Now fortunately on the Wisco and with most of these ARM based systems it's pretty easy to calculate screen coordinates they're not too difficult and also we have a multiply command. Now each line is 320 pixels wide and there's two pixels per byte so that's 160 bytes. Now the lines are consecutive below each other so all we need to do is take our y position multiply it by 160 and add our x position and add that to the screen base. Okay so we calculated the screen base before and so we add the screen base we then add the y position times 160 here and finally we add the x position here and that will calculate the screen address of the x, y position we want here. So that will calculate the starting position. Of course, because the lines are consecutive in memory, it's very straightforward to get the next line. All we do is add 160, because each line is 160 wide, and that will move us down entirely one line for the next draw. As I say, very straightforward on this system. Not always the case, though, so I do split these functions out into two separate things. Now you can see here um, these essentially the same functions are being used in slightly different ways for the print char routine. We're using a one bit per pixel font in this case so there's some conversion. I'm not going to go into that today though as I say it's really an extension of these get screen pause and get next line functions and that's really the extent of what I wanted to cover today. So there we go. So we've had a look at Risk OS and we've looked at how we can get some graphics onto the screen, how to turn the screen mode on for 16 color mode and how we can draw to the screen. And hopefully this is enough to get you started with doing your own programming. Once you can get something on the screen, hopefully you're in a position where you can actually start to extend that into something a little bit nicer. Um, as always, you can download the source code for today's example from my website. So please go ahead and do that and give it a go. Uh, you can also download the build scripts. Uh, you will have to find your own Risk OS ROM. I'm afraid I can't provide that for legal reasons, but um, hopefully this will be some help to you. So if you've enjoyed this, please like and subscribe because I'll be doing more ARM and Risk content later on. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and goodbye.